Greetings, Brad Anderson here, your host for uh, Wiretap. Uh, today I've got Michelle Paris, VP of Strategy here at uh, Click, and Jay Goldman, VP of Innovation and Emerging Channels. And we're going to talk about two stories uh, from the Click Wire uh, this week. The number one story we want to talk about is uh, physicians uh, seeing twice as many reps with iPads. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so what do you guys think about this? The new Manhattan research. I think I it's. Go ahead, uh, Michelle. Okay. Um, I think it's a really exciting trend that is not necessarily altogether surprising. We see a huge adoption of these devices in the consumer marketplace, and it is really only a matter of time by the before we see them being more adopted by enterprise, in particular situations where they can contact HCPs and um, and visit reps. So it's you know not necessarily a surprise, but it'd be interesting to know a little bit more possibly about the impact or what specifically they're doing on those um, little iPads when they're in the office with the CPUs. I don't know, Jay, if you've got any. Yeah, absolutely. So when we're doing iConnect, which is our iPad suite for anybody who doesn't know, uh, we're certainly seeing that the companies who have deployed iPads are getting a great reaction from HCPs, but there's also a shiny toy factor to this. So the HCP's interest is held by the iPad right now because iPads are shiny new toys and everybody wants to play with them. That's declining rapidly. So I think as the percentage of HCPs who have seen a rep with an iPad goes up, the duration of extension on that detail, the interest that it gives the HCP is gonna go down because we're now seeing more and more of these devices in the field. And that means that although you might right now get a boost in access to HCPs or in the length of time you have in front of them just by virtue of having an iPad, it doesn't change the fact that if the information on it doesn't remain up to date, novel, interesting, high value to the HCP, that effect isn't going to continue. But what is going to happen is as that number gets closer to 100, and this is 65% of HCPs have seen at least one rep with an iPad, not that 65% of reps have iPads, but as that number gets closer to 100, you really can't afford to have a single source in the field that doesn't have iPads. Because it now starts to make your reps, and by virtue and extension, you look like you're not innovating. Exactly, and I think that's where it starts to raise the bar as well in terms of what else can you do on an iPad, how do you create compelling content that is valuable, that is personalized, and also how do you you know, optimize a CRM strategy to be able to deliver content to that HCP and extend it beyond the iPad in the life cycle past the point where they're in there, uh, they're visiting with the rep doing the, the detail. Absolutely, yeah, so if we're doing, say, an NPP piece, maybe a self-directed exactly. e-detail on the website, how do you have that mm -hmm. information pass from what happens on the iPad into that experience? How do we drive the HCP to that experience? And also, as you're planning out your content cycle, how do you mm -hmm. say, we're going to drive quarterly updates to the sales aid to focus on different messaging per quarter so that mm -hmm. our reps have the frequency of four times a year visits to their HCPs and every time they're in there they have fresh information, something that you, know, you, you just couldn't do with a print sales aid exactly. cycle, but you can do when you're on a dynamic platform. Yeah. Excellent, yeah. Um, so the second story I wanted to get your opinions on is um, it's from Health Ed Academy, sort of a smaller group, uh, but they did a survey, which was pretty interesting. A uh, survey of 155, they call them healthcare extenders. We call them allied health, same difference. Um, and they talked about how these folks are using pharma websites and other materials across the web, um, and that they print materials and that 85% of them will use these, these digital channels um, with patients. So and the, the channels that they use in order, in ranked order of preference, are sort of desktop, smartphones, tablets, and then some other, some other stuff. So this digital getting into the, to the interview room, um, so what do you guys think about that in terms of, of pharma marketing? Sure, yeah, I think the increasing presence of digital at point of care, whether that's in a, in a room or whether it's you know, over a counter with a pharmacist or whatever it is, um, means that we need to think about our materials being used in that context when we're, pre we're preparing them. So it's no longer we're building an HCP website which is for reference by an HCP, we may be building an HCP website which will be used at point of care as education material. Uh, but I think it also opens up the possibility of creating dedicated patient ed materials for delivery through those channels. So, you know, we've heard from many HCPs that if they had really compelling disease state awareness materials, even branded, 
uh, on the iPad that they could use with patients. They would not only make use of those materials, but it opens up the possibility for them to be able to hand an iPad off to a patient, maybe a newly diagnosed patient, leave the room, let the patient spend 10, 15 minutes going through that material, and then come back in, which means they can use that 10 or 15 minutes for something else. And that really changes the way that they're able to offer a very high level of care. And it's a great opportunity for our clients to present a branded message, obviously with safety information and all the other regulatory concerns, mm -hmm. but to be able to gain access to that newly diagnosed patient right at point of care, which is something that, you know, other than maybe a printed brochure, has been a very difficult time in the patient life cycle to capture something. Mm -hmm. Exactly, and I think that, you know, two of the points that we just discussed in the previous question also come back into this in terms of extending it out, in terms of what happens after point of care, what is the type of programming that we can develop, that our clients can develop, that work with a patient over the course of their patient journey, over the course of their life, life cycle with various different touch points, and then also, um, the other point is no longer with me, so we're just going to pass it along. So we'll say one point. We'll say one point. Sorry. Well, the other thing with... With these stats, the, I've seen a couple of studies like this now with, the, mm -hmm. with Allied Health. You're really extending your HCP mm -hmm. audience. Mm -hmm. It's not just the physician anymore. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, the, and these folks are spending a lot more time with the patient, right? Yeah. Depending on your disease state, you know, up to 60 minutes. Mm -hmm. Now, you're not going to get your materials up there for 60 minutes, but if you've got some good stuff that can be shown on the screen on a desktop or on a tablet, maybe with animations or whatever, then that can really help. And I've seen a, a, a couple of tools where you can actually draw on it and then email it to the patient. Mm -hmm. And so in that case, now you're pro providing even greater value mm -hmm. for the HCP to, to help the patient understand even after they've left the office. Right, so not just what I showed you while you were in my, my clinic or whatever the mm -hmm. setting is, but let me take exactly the conversation we just had, email it yeah. to you, and then when you get home, you've now got access to that. Same material. Yeah. And anything that goes above and beyond that. And I think as well that the patient expectation, like these are not new devices, they're not difficult to use. These are now becoming, they're so prevalent within consumer culture that showing somebody something on a tablet or a smartphone isn't going to completely discombobulate them and not and <laughs> try to you know, well, how do I use this? What is the purpose of this? Why am I doing it? This is something that is becoming expected. And this is, we'll see more and more and more of this type of behavior within HCP patient discussion. Yeah, actually, I would expect that the e-patient category of mm -hmm. patients will seek out yeah. HCPs who offer that type of education yeah. or those types of materials. From the doctor's perspective, it actually becomes almost a selling point for mm -hmm. their practice over somebody else. Uh, you know, it, it's a great point that you're going to get more time with patients as the allied health group gains access to these, not just the doctor who might be in and out mm -hmm. within a few minutes, but the nurse who's there for 60 minutes can go back to the materials, can use them in the same way. So definitely expanding the sphere in which you're able to get your materials out to patients. Great. Well, thank you very much for being part of this week's uh, Wiretub. Thank you very much.